understand not rice confetti yes confetti shaped as the letter a a as in amy a as in are you completely stupid or have i just caught you on a really bad day okay bye <sighs> zoe where is julian going to stand maybe we should have told him about this morning uh no you have the rest of your life to be with him today it's just the two of us one hundred and forty-seven point five centimetres. Right, I was right. <clears throat> but I don't have to wear it. Yeah, hi Lydia. Hi Lydia. Yeah, we've got a problem. Uh, excuse uh, me. Yeah, a one hundred and forty-seven point five centimetre problem, and you have twenty-six hours and thirty-four minutes to sort it. Okay, bye. Excuse me. Um, oh, oh, Keith. Yeah. Whoa, Keith, Keith, Keith. Okay, give me solutions, not problems, Keith. Yes, I know it's June, but I will not have the ice sculpture melting on the happiest day of my sister's life. Have you got it? G excuse me! Will you please be quiet? Of course, but we're so sorry. Uh, <laughs> no, we're not. Uh, we've got a wedding to rehearse. But there is nothing in the church diary until this afternoon. I am helping with the flowers. Are you? Well, we are rehearsing the rehearsal. <coughs> oh, yeah, go. Oh, oh, hallelujah, there is a God. <laughs> it's the end of the week, and I feel great. Oh, no. Um, I woke up this morning, and my first thought was of you. Oh, no, no. How do I feel today? Oh, oh Emma. Oh, rubbish. Um... Come in. Ten o'clock meeting. Oh, yes. Sorry, sorry. Uh, I was miles away. I don't suppose you've done any good dating tips for the modern male, do you? Sorry? Uh, wrong person to ask. Mind you, I suppose there is no Mr. Right anymore, is there? There's only Mr. Could do better. Or oh, Mr. I wish you could read my mind. Or even better still. Mr. I can write an eloquent entry in a diary. I have no idea what you're talking about. Heston, neither do I. Sit down. What can I do for you? It's about a member of staff. What's Al done now? It's not Al. Dr. Carmichael. She's crossed a line. And step, and step, and step. And oh, I can't step. do it, Zoe. They're killing my feet. What? No pain, no gain. Oh, okay. Hi, Tara. Yeah, okay, Tara, you've got like 10 seconds. Uh, I'm sorry, no. There is no neurovirus on my watch. Chief Bridesmaid does not get to pull out, so I will see you this afternoon. Okay. Um, look, let, let's just try it with the music, okay? And step, and step, and step, and st What? What's the matter? Song, it makes me think of Team GB. Okay, well, that is great, because we are going for gold here, Amy. Look, I... I know that you and Julian like your own sort of music, but I'm just not sure anyone else will. So let's just throw those curtains wide, shall we? Well, can you please turn that off? This is not a nightclub. It is a place of prayer and quiet contemplation. I... I, I think... I think you need to cut us a bit of slack, Mrs... Tembe. Mrs. Tembe, we are trying to organise a wedding. Ashley, I think the lady has a point. Julian. This is why you're up at five today. Is this 
Really necessary. Are you really necessary? Well, I am the groom. At least get a walk on part. <laughs> Haven't you got something you should be doing? I will be back later to talk to the florist. In the meantime, remember where you are. This is the house of God. What are you doing here? I was planning on whisking you away for the morning. The place you had our first date? Yeah, um, OK, but sadly, we don't have any time, so shall we get on? And you are not due here for another 365 minutes. Well, now I'm here, where do you want me? I don't know. Behind that pillar might be good. Ow! Ow! Are you OK? Oh, ow! Don't worry, I've got her. Not I've got her. You're all right. Oh, oh, shoes, oh, 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 oh. Excuse me. Coffee. Oh, thanks. Oh, come on, Heston. You're not still all hot and bothered about yesterday, are you? Do you think it's funny? No. <laughs> Sid's fine. Is that before or after you slapped him? Don't you think you're overreacting just a little bit? Am I? Really? Come in. Oh, I thought you were Mr. Bukowski. Um, he's my next patient. <laughs> are you... Are you OK? Yeah, I, I was just, um... Yeah, more than OK. And how are you getting on with the Marshall case? Oh, uh, good news. They've done some more tests at St. Phil's and it seems I was right about the Lyme disease. And clever old you. <laughs> And what treatment are you proposing? Oh, um, I was just looking into the best course of antibiotics for her. I mean, hopefully we've caught it in time to make a difference. Well, good. <clears throat> Keep me updated. I will. I'm going to make a cup of your fancy one. Yeah, I can take it from here, Julian. I can't leave my bride to be in a lurch now, can I? <laughs> you wouldn't dare. <laughs> oh, it's you. Do you work here? Anyway, um, my sister needs to see a doctor, like now. This is a very busy practice. And this is an emergency. The wedding is in 23 hours and 58 minutes. Oh, a June bride. That's lovely. Uh, I will see what I can do, but you will have to wait. No, we can't wait. I can wait. The NHS works in a different time zone to you, Zoe. Look, please, j just take a seat. Yeah, well, the NHS could do with someone like me. Why don't you go and cheer me the caterers or something? Why don't you go? Look, you guys both go. I'll be fine. Oh, I'm ever so sorry. You can't use that in here. Hi, Steve. No, Steve, this isn't some rubbish flyer for the local takeaway. This is the order of service. Yeah, we said noon, and I meant noon. That's noon with an N, and N no as in... No phones allowed. Bye, Agnes. Thank you very much. See you next week. Yeah, uh, 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 Doc, take I, I am so sorry. I, I was wondering whether you could see this, uh, this young lady here. She's getting married tomorrow and she's done something to her foot. No one else is available. No, just sort it. Yeah, she'll have to wait, though. I've got to see Mr Williams first and I've got to make a quick phone call. <sighs> and what is that? Don't ask. Sign this. Those idiot printers will be giving us beer mats at this rate and I still have the wedding favours to check. And judging by the way, the rest of the no, day is going. It's OK, you go. I've got Julian. OK, be back as soon as you can. And don't take any nonsense from the doctors. Mr Williams, please. Follow me. A, a doctor, Claire, will see you as soon as he can. Thank you, Mrs Tembay. Are you sure this is what you want, Amy? I mean, I don't need hoops and heels and hair to marry you. I know, but you know Zoe. She never does anything by halves. Yeah, but it's your big day. She just wants to give me the dream wedding. Uh, it's more like a nightmare if you ask me. It's not that bad, is it? No. Anything for you. Hi. Can we have a chat? Karen says you've got a gap. Yeah. Of course. Um, you're the boss. <laughs> so, Dr Carter came to see me earlier. He said you'd been having a bit of trouble with Dr. Carmichael. He shouldn't have said anything. No, he was right to. This practice has a duty of care towards you. It's exactly the kind of thing that we need to know about. 
well, uh, look, it's all over now anyway, so um, it's fine. Is it? According to Dr. Carter, a serious incident occurred yesterday. Dr. Carmichael struck you on the hand. Look, it wasn't as bad as that. I, I, I was just being a bit slow, as usual, and she just got a bit impatient and just lashed out. It was more of a tap, really. That's no excuse for assaulting a member of staff. We wouldn't accept that kind of behaviour from a patient, certainly not from a doctor. I don't want to make a fuss. Okay? And like you said before, I just need to toughen up a bit. So. Well, it's a bit more serious than that. Dr. Carter's made a complaint on your behalf. He can't do that. Yes, he can. So I need to hear your side of the story. Do I have to? I'm afraid so. So when did this all start? Ah, no better now? Yes. But Zoe's going to go ballistic. There's nowhere I can wear those shoes now. You can go barefoot for all I care. Once we're in the church tomorrow, Nothing else will matter. You're right. <gasps> Don't answer it. I dare you. I have to. Hi, Zoe. Not quite. I can't wear the shoes. Daniel, I'm calling the partners meeting at 3.30. No can do, I'm afraid. What? Um, I'm going up to the university. I won't be back in time. Me too. We'll go together if you want. OK. Well, attendance is mandatory. Well, can't Jimmy cover for us? No, we can't. I expect you both to be there. What's he getting his knickers in a twist about? I know. Did you really mean that about going over with me? Yes. I'll come get you, Fionn. I know. Yeah. I know, I know. <sighs> yes. We're on our way. <sighs> you heard the doctor. You should go home and rest that foot. I know. Thank you, Mrs Tembe. It's my pleasure. I will see you later at the church. Oh, goodbye. Oh, I am doing the flowers. <gasps> it's going to be secateurs at dawn. Thank you for coming today. I had another look at Michael's research and realised I hadn't taken it all in first time round, so... I'm glad you've changed your mind about him. Well, where Joe's concerned, I'm not leaving anything to chance, so... It's a long time since we've done this. What, hold hands? No. We need to be together. You, me and Joe, we need... to be a family again. I'll just go and wish him luck. Of course. Uh, I think so. I didn't expect to see Daniel here. Me neither. I think he's had a change of heart. That's reassuring. Good luck. <clears throat> Thank you for coming. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Dr Michael Burnett and I've been researching allergies and intolerance in children and the relationship with developmental delay for... <laughs> Longer than I care to admit. <laughs> As I stand here before you, my heart beating so loudly in my ears, I find myself thinking back... Yeah, OK, like, touch faster, Amy. We're going to try again. As I stand here before you, my heart beating so loudly... Right, and again? Uh, I promise that I will love okay, her... One more time. Will you please let her get... Her words out. My thoughts, exactly. Is it me, or are some of these flowers wilting already? It's OK. I'll give it another go. No. Take a break. You're in pain. Let's hear you, Julian. I can't say this. Who even uses words like obedience anymore? We agreed on a traditional wedding. We didn't agree. You decided. I'm only trying to help. Help? Anybody would think this is your wedding. Stop it, both of you. Come on, Amy. Is this really what you want? I would never even have met you if it wasn't for Zoe. I could never have got into uni without her. So that means she gets to control everything that we do? She's the one person in my life I've always been able to count on. The one person. 
No, I didn't mean... Julian, please. It's his loss. No, Zoe. It's mine. Reflux is another underrated factor causing delay in a child's neurological development. My pioneering case study in this field showed conclusively that this was the case. Sorry, could I stop you there? Sure. Could you just clarify for me, please, uh, how many children you used in your study and their ages? Uh, I've seen several different children with different backgrounds and different ethnicity. Their age isn't significant at this stage. Oh, well, I beg to differ. What? I think their age is significant. Uh, it will all be made clear in the final draft of my report. Yes, but... There will be time for questions at the end of the presentation. And I hope that the world is as keen on reading my final research as Dr. Granger is. Here. It's all over. The wedding's a disaster. What are we going to tell everyone? Well, perhaps it is for the best. What do you mean? Well, for something that is supposed to be a joyful and harmonious occasion, I've, I've witnessed rather a lot of argument and discord. But me and Julian have been fine until today. Really? Yes. Do you believe in Mr. Wright, Mrs. Tenby? You must do. You're married. None of my boyfriends have ever stood up to Zoe before. She's always frightened them off. But not Julian. He makes me laugh. He makes me do silly things. I've never had so much fun. With Zoe, it always feels like I have to be on my best behavior. With Julian, it's the opposite. He lets me be me. And I love him for it. Then why have you let your sister push him away? You don't understand. Zoe's always looked out for me. We lost our parents early on. I was a mess. Zoe was the one that held it together. But you're not a child anymore. I know, but I'm all she's got. This is your wedding. If you love him as much as you say you do, then you are going to have to fight for him. It is not very often that we find someone who is so right for us. So, stand up to your sister. Get him back. I'd like to move on to food, which is one of the most common causes of allergy that I've found so far. The food elimination diet is particularly useful in this case for patients with multiple developmental problems. Sorry, Dr. Burnett, but the size and age of your study group still bothers me. Uh, you used 20 children, is that right? Yes. Well, if this is truly groundbreaking research, then why wouldn't you try to use more than 20 children? I mean, the youngest was nine months old, right? Do you seriously believe that this is a representative sample for such a study of importance? Daniel, stop. This isn't the time or place. I thought it was enough, yes. Oh. And in your research into the chemical body burden, your sample of patients were manipulated, weren't they? I don't know what you mean, Dr Granger. Oh, well, what I mean is that the patients have lived in an area uh, with increased exposure to air pollution from power plants and factories for generations. Isn't that right, Dr Burnett? In fact, I put it to you that your reflux study seems to be the only one that wasn't rushed or the results ignored or manipulated in order to change it to a more positive outcome. OK, well, what are we going to tell everyone? That your useless boyfriend has cried off? People are going to start arriving any minute now. He's not useless. And I spoke to him. He's coming back. I think you should both try to calm down. Calm down? Oh. Do you know how many hours I've put into this wedding? You just don't get it, do you? What? I don't need all this. I don't need confetti with an A, or ice sculptures, or a wedding favour. I just need Julian. OK, well, excuse me for trying to give you the perfect wedding. No, Zoe, I appreciate everything you've done. Oh, I well, do. You've got a really funny way of showing it. 
But don't you see? You're giving me the wedding day you'd like to have. This is all about you, not me. But you, you do have wonderful organisational skills. Have you, you, you've put her up to this, haven't you? No. No, I have not. She loves Julian very much. But she also loves you too. Yeah, well... Yeah, of course she does. Mrs Tembe is right, I do. But you've got to let me do the wedding my way. Well, now he's being selfish. Uh, I think I'm allowed to be selfish on my wedding day. Our wedding day. Julian. Oh, I'm so happy you came back. Me too. I love you, Amy. And I'm sorry, Zoe. Yeah, well, apology accepted. Let me finish. I know you're part of the deal. Amy's told me how much she cares about you, how much you've done for her. I'm not going to stand in the way of that. Let's have the wedding of the century. But after this, you're going to have to back off. OK? Please, Zoe. Hallelujah, there is a God. <laughs> I spoke to some of the mothers of the children from your study and they told me that after phase one they decided to remove their children from you because you didn't prove to them that your studies were safe or well managed. That's not strictly true. Isn't it? Because from the 20 mothers I spoke to at least five of them told me that they did not consent and refused to be any part of your study. Is that right, Dr Burnett? Not exactly. Yes or no? Yes. Yes. So that means that over 25% of the data from your study is forged. Hang on a minute. Yes or no, Doctor? Daniel, that's enough. The truth is, is that you are twisting your research to fit your theories, and that is bad medicine. So from now on, nothing that you say can be taken as a reliable basis for treatment. <laughs> Right, we have uh, 13 minutes before everyone starts arriving. Can we uh, try the processional one more time? Zoe, there's just one more thing we'd like you to do for us. We? Yeah. It was actually Julian's idea. OK. What is it? How would you feel about walking me down the aisle? Oh, no, th that is an excellent suggestion. I know I said I wanted to do it on my own, but... Actually, it feels right that we do it together now. Um, OK. Uh, that, that sounds like a plan. We're, um, <clears throat> we're going to need to rehearse it, though. Of course. As long as I get to pick the music, I draw the line at your playlist. Uh, well, at least people have heard of my playlist. You are right, though. Uh, may I make a suggestion? Michael. Just go. I'm sorry, I didn't know he was going to do that. Well, that's a relief. Please don't give up on your work. I still have faith in you. I don't really care what you think. I had nothing to do with this. No. I wish I'd never met you. Goodbye, Zara. What the hell was all that about? People needed to know. You made him look like a total fraud. Well, if the cap fits. You know what? I actually believed that you were keeping an open mind. You were just using me, weren't you, as part of your plan to discredit him? Who are you? <laughs> How many times do I have to tell you? Even when you're crying, you're beautiful too. The world is beating you down. I'm around through every mood. You're my downfall. <sighs> Sorry to keep you all waiting. I know we've got much better things to do. So, what is all this about? Well, sorry to inform you, Dr. Carmichael, but there's been a formal complaint made against you for bullying, including a physical attack. 
Even when I lose, I'm winning. Cause I'll give you all of me. And you give me all of you. Twenty sixth of May, Dr. Carmichael loses her temper and tells Dr. Veer that he is not fit to be a doctor. Well, that's honestly what I thought at the time. You'll get your chance to put your point across. Twenty ninth of May, Dr. Carmichael undermines Dr. Veer in front of the patient. He wasn't. Eighth of June, belittles Dr. Veer when he makes a minor prescription error. Ninth of June, humiliates Dr. Veer for not filling in his paperwork correctly, and the list goes on. You've constantly undermined, belittled, and been verbally abusive towards that lad. And yesterday. You physically attack him? Are you serious? That was barely a tap on the hand. We've got to be tough on our mentees, otherwise they're not going to get anywhere, are they? Daniel. You're making him out to be an idiot. Not at all. We're sure it's a slower developmental thing. Why couldn't your husband have affection for you? Him? I don't know where he is. Can we go to the story corner and read the latest instalment of Bridget Reed's diary? Howard's too busy. I will never forgive you if you ruin things for Joe. Wimbledon begins on Monday, so Doctors takes a brief summer break.